Hey, listen to Commander Quick Cult Podcast, episode 167. I'm Brando. I'm here with Ryan. Today we're going to kick off a brand new arc. Now hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? Good. What's going down? Whole ton is going down. We're back to start our new arc proper, a uh, Discord member suggested arc that we're going to just take and run with. We got a couple new patrons to thank. We've got a new giveaway to announce. We've got some stories to tell. But before we do any of that, we've got to thank our official sponsor, FaceToFaceGames.com, the Canada's biggest magic store. Ooh, very much so. And listeners will know, because they can hear me, what I sound like. <laughs> yes, we were, we were both out at different bars last night. Uh, Ryan had a university alumnus thing he had to go to. I was out for beers with the dude bros after EDH and M. Uh, you were at a much louder bar. Yeah, you know me. what? It, it turns out I was at both bars because I was at the post EDH and M drinks at, yeah. the, at the mall. Yeah, uh, we, I mean, you know what? Apparently, that's unique. We play our our LGS is in a mall, and there's also a bar in the same mall. Everybody's <laughs> like, I've never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to Saskatchewan. <laughs> yeah, that's it, <laughs> oh, dude. And that's it. So we've got some business to take care of. We've got I've got a little bit of a like a thank you type story, right? But before any of that, new arc. New arc. It's the arc of audience ish. Uh, we're going to call it the arc of level up yours. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Big shout out to Raf Garcia for sending us that subject line in an email. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we're just running with it. Yeah, this, we're just going to take it. This is a level up arc. Still doing lists, still doing spicy brews, but we've focused on ones that were both submitted by our listeners, our patrons on the CCO Discord or via email that allow you to become a better magic player. Yeah, ones you built to, to do something a little bit unique, a little bit different, and then you realized as you were building or playing, like, hey, there's a there's a new strategy here. There's something that I can take from playing this and apply it to all of the other games that you play with other decks. That's right. And and I think I think, and you'd probably agree that that is a very important part of the game becoming a magic player or or venturing out into the greater world you know you go you start going to fnm or you go to your first magic festival for example this is the kind of stuff that you got to think of because you're going to be playing against decks that aren't just your your friends or cards you have dot deck right yeah, well it, and it's also important to to grow in anything that you do because if you kind of hit that stagnation point a lot of times people then become either bored uh, or disinterested or discouraged and maybe don't feel like playing anymore that's some heavy d stuff right there right that's that's the reason we started the podcast in the first place is for you to expand your technical production radio resume right yeah and i mean now we've done that and now we're hopefully helping other people to level up their game to keep themselves, like, at a base level, interested. Yeah. I mean, I guess you have to be interested to listen to the show, especially with two knuckleheads like us at the helm. Especially what I sound like. Yeah, but, like, at the end of the day, like, you want to hear something new, you want to hear something fresh, and you want to try something different. And I think that this arc really encompasses that, where people stumble across those things, maybe by accident, maybe on purpose, but everybody gets a little better and they move their game forward. I do like that. Sometimes you stumble on this stuff, stumble onto this stuff by accident, and you just are like, "Oh, right." Cue, uh, cue the weekly mention of Pramacon persistent partitioners. Yep. I didn't set out to change the way I think about politicking and magic. That just happened, so I didn't die when I played that deck because it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Brando didn't try to not pull his hair out editing this episode because I've cleared my throat like four times now and he's just going to have to cut it all out. <laughs> it's so terrible. Oh, Sorry, So if, if you've heard that happen, I apologize for that because even I miss sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't you don't listen to the show ten times through in editing? No, just like twice. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. That's the arc. Of course, new giveaway. New giveaway. What are we giving away this month? Right? We are switching it up a little bit. Uh oh. Uh, sometimes it's on accident, sometimes it's on purpose, like this time, like you just said, right? Yeah. Instead of doing a deck giveaway, there's this new product coming out called, uh, maybe you've heard of it, Mystery Boosters. Ooh. Ooh. So we, you and I, okay. Commander Cookout 
Enterprises is procuring a box of said mystery boosters from our LGS. Dope. Support your LGS, kids. Very important. We are going to give a bunch of packs of that away. Okay. All yeah. Right. We're, we're also going to crack a bunch on YouTube and drink some beer. <laughs> so, I mean... I mean, you all know what this is. Yeah, we're going to give away the pack that has the mana crypt in it, though. Oh, the 100%. mana vault or whatever. Oh, yeah, whatever the, 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 the foil bloom tender, too. Yeah, I can't get those cards straight in my head, but we're going to get them in our box, and we're going to give them to you. That's right. So how do you win? This And this is, this is interesting, too. We're switching this up. Right, this is the good one. So on the Monday before each show comes out, we're going to, on Twitter and Facebook and on the CCO pre-show on YouTube, CCO podcast on YouTube, if you want to find that, if you're not already there, we are going to drop hints as to what commander we are talking about on the upcoming episode. We're going to give hints that are actually good enough for you to guess the commander. Anybody that guesses the commander right, entered into the draw. That's right. And we aren't going to tell you if it's right. We're just going to, like, give funny emojis or say, I don't know, maybe, etc. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll just like the reply. Totally oh. vague. Like, yeah, we saw it. We see you. We see you. Right? You right? We don't know. We like we liked that you guessed at our hint, yes. whether it's wrong or right. We like that you're interacting, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So this week's hint went out. Like, the hints were, you know, it's a dude. He's a remake. He's in a crappy color combination. Etc. Yeah. So those are the hints. Of course, if you see any of the social media posts with the the chance to win the, the packs, yep. feel free. Tag a friend. Retweet. If you like YouTube, check us out. It's all there. How many packs? Uh, let's call it a couple instances of three packs. Sure. So a couple giveaways to be able to win in this arc. You'll have a couple, we're going to draw a couple of names out of the hat. A couple of people are going to get some number of packs. It's it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. This is going to be a great time for everybody involved. Uh, also, CCO Podcast, CCO Brando, CCO Podcast on Facebook, and CCO Podcast on YouTube. If you want to find those social media posts, you can get entered to win the fabulous draw. And, of course, all of the official details will be available at CommanderCookout.com. That's it. Last giveaway of the arc, of course, $25 in store credit to FaceToFaceGames.com. They're Canada's biggest magic store. And you can win that by making a tweet thanking us or them for working together. Make sure you tag CCO Podcast and Face to Face Games on Twitter. You can interact some way favorably with both of us on Facebook as well. Just something to let them know that Ryan and Brando were a good pickup and we are doing a good job for them. Yes, we appreciate that as well because sometimes it's nice to hear that you're doing a good job. That's it. I don't know. I don't know if we ever hear that. but <laughs> like Once or twice, I take pictures of them with my phone and then keep them Oh yeah. on my phone when people send things to say that I did a good job. There it is. I don't know if that's like sad <laughs> i got a t we got a text into rock 102 when i was doing my prize man brando bit yeah the other day it was like is prize man brando single he sounds really nice Ooh, Ooh yeah i showed that to kyla and she was like oh brando i'm so proud of you because <laughs> i got my first like radio also, I'm, like... Gonna, I'm gonna kill that bitch <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's great should we read the commander then thank a new patron a hundred percent. All right. Don't leave the nation waiting to Ooh. see if they got the hint right. So if you guessed, you're probably on pins and needles, or if you're really on point, you already know, and I'm just going to spoil it for you. Here we go. It is Gerard Weatherlight Hero. He's from this last set of Commander decks, right? He is from C19. That's right. There we go. He is a 3-3 for Boros and 2. There's the air quotes shitty color combination. He has First Strike and... Whenever he dies, you exile him and return to the battlefield all artifact and creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. Yes, and big shout out to Raf Garcia, patron of the show, friend, Discord member, editor for Commander Central. Yeah, that's too bad. He has to work with Max Crandell. Oh, eh? yeah, jeez. That's, he has the worst job in pod, podcasts. Yeah, that's right. Like, no shit. Yeah. Yeah. So, big thank you to him for sending it in, and of course, the... The, the the suggestion for arc name, level up yours. I love <laughs> yeah. it. It's on brand. It's perfect. That's dope. So thanks for sending the list in. Thanks for helping us name the arc. Uh, and uh, hopefully he is, you're He's gonna... at Urza Bearwalker on Twitter. I'll put his Twitter in the show notes for anybody who wants to give him a follow. Yeah, along with the like links to this list and all the social media. Yeah, exactly. Moving on. Moving on. Big shout out and thank you to new patron, 
Kyle Fritz. So is it like Kyle Fritz the cat? Remember Fritz the cat? Nope. No? You never saw that? Uh, have I seen anything? No, that's why I make the joke. Oh. <laughs> I like how it's a meme for you now. <laughs> Fritz the cat was one of those like old 70s cartoon cat porns. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. yes. Now yes. that you see the little... I looked, I put a picture up so that Ryan can yes. see. But you, you've seen this picture around. Most people have. Sure. And if you haven't, it. I'm at a lot. I'm at an impasse here. I don't know whether I should tell people to look it up or not. <gasps> oh. Because you could Google it because it's funny, but if you Google it in the wrong company, you could get, like, divorced. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, it's maybe just don't Google it. Fritz. Yeah, but it, it's there. The point is, shout out, thank you, Kyle Fritz the Cat. Yes. 70s cat porn. Yeah, dude. Ah. It's the best kind of porn. I don't know. No? <laughs> Next shout out. If you ever had a, uh, a a cam girl that you were like talking to for whatever reason, you'd be like, yo, do some of that Fritz the Cat shit. Oh, no, and no, no. see what put, she does. Put, put the Snapchat cat filter thing on your face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gross. Okay, now we're in agreement. Yes. Next shout out Christopher DeWitt. Isn't he our. He, it's Chris Dimwit, right? No, that was a different Dimwit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> damn it. Um, Christopher, damn it. There that we works. go. That works. Oh, all right. There that it works. is. Perfect. Here we are. We're stumbling across even more stuff by accident. Oh, yeah. I love it. Oh, it's perfect. We're, we're going to accidentally stumble over so many things in this arc. It's going to be great. Well, hopefully some of them are some cough drops. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You had a story you wanted to tell. Oh, yeah. It, it Sort of. It's so. It's a more of a thank you to CCO Nation than anything. So I'm out at this alumni thing. And what it was is a University of Saskatchewan track and field, like, coaching and athlete alumni get together is what it was and i am there with for example i'm there with the creator and ceo of skip the dishes.com guys a bajillionaire i'm yeah. there with ex world record holders national championships or national champions olympians i'm there with like real people that have done very meaningful things for the people around them their country uh, like real fucking people, you know what I mean? And it's because of the support we get through CCO Nation that has allowed us to be successful through, you know, I, I've got two podcasts. I talk about you. I talk about painting cards. And everybody, all of these people were interested in what I do. Neat. And they wanted to talk to me. They wanted to ask me what I do. And and that partially leans into like th their quality of character when they want to talk about other people and they're interested in not themselves. But it's also testament to the support that we get from CCO Nation that they've allowed us to be successful and do this for as long as we've done it. Neat. Yeah. That's so. pretty cool. Also, it's probably, probably has something to do with the fact that you said X world record holders because they're big fucking losers and we're not. <laughs> I don't think I don't. <laughs> I think if you're a world record holder, you are all it's like being an Olympic champion or a Super Bowl winner or a Stanley Cup winner. You are always a Stanley Cup champion yeah, you've after always, you've won at one time. For sure. Right? While you do lose your world record, you were a world record holder. You'd still be like on the side of the cup, like near the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. It's, it's fine. Okay. You're on the fucking cup. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. And then eventually they take the ring of the cup off and then they put it somewhere. Where do the hell do those things go? Is it like know. a super huge Stanley Cup in like the Hockey Hall of Fame? Like, yes, it's it's called the Stanley Cup. With all the, Have well, you yeah, seen like, how big it is? Well, yeah, but they... Did you see how big it used to be? They take rings off of it, though. They do. Uh, yeah, I suppose and, they yeah, do. Yeah, like they do. This like are all the old rings like in the Hockey Hall of Fame. If anybody knows... Uh, CCO Brando on Twitter. I would. I'm actually curious. I'm, I'm sure they do. Have you ever seen it? I'll, I'll like, ask my maybe. dad. He's been to the Hockey Hall of Fame like a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> should we do a deck? We should probably talk about a deck. Now we're going to switch things up a little bit this week, where because Ryan's voice is all effed up, so he's going to read the card name, and then I'm going to tell you what the card does. Yes. We're going to switch it up entirely. Can you see point, from there? Point form faster than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I can see everything I need to see. Excellent. Where do you want to start? Our thing, this deck is posted on Architect, which is different than what we usually use, and things are like arranged in categories and shit. I like the custom categories. If you're going to send decks to us, please have them in custom categories if you know, oh. if you know how to. Or want to take the time 
Yeah. 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 Commander Kukow to gmail.com. Send your lists in. We're still making the, the plan for the arc, so there's still time to get your list featured on the show. I forgot that, to mention that earlier. Yeah, that's right. All right, so let's start with the make X ones. Yeah, column. this is this is an interesting category because it's like not what the deck really wants to do, but these are just auxiliary cards that give you advantage. The level up moment f- for this deck, when I look at it, is Boros has card advantage. I think that's that's the theme of this episode. Is Boros does have card advantage. It just doesn't come by way of traditional spend card and mana, pick up cards from your library. Yeah, I, I sit on my hands and bite my tongue lots. Even when I'm dunking on white, it's because white's like a support color for life and, and, and fuck white, right? But white isn't actually bad. It just doesn't draw cards. It yeah. ramps as good as anything else. It's like I was talking at the, the bar last night. Like, if you want to play white or a deck with white in it, if you play the four white ramp cards, like land tax and stuff. Well, land tax isn't ramp, but... Um, it, it, it is after you've played Night Armageddon. Of, Night of the turn. White Orchid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is after okay. you've Armageddoned everybody. And everybody's screwed except you because you have a mitt full of land now. That's like, right. You... White has ways to do all the stuff that the other colors do just in a different way. And I think that's probably what this deck is doing. Yeah, I was going to say you have to change the way that you play and think about magic, right? When you play a white deck or a Boros deck in that you get your card advantage by 10 for winning your opponent with a Wrath of God. Yeah. That is card advantage. Right, it's board advantage. It's not pick up more cards than my opponent advantage, but you can you can accrue advantage. You can get stuff back with white. This deck gets stuff back with red from its graveyard. That is card advantage. That's how black does it, and black's one of the best colors. I'm not saying that Boros is as good as black, because black gets stuff back from its graveyard better, but you'll see we've got some fairly powerful cards and we've got an extreme redundancy in this deck to be able to get stuff back from the graveyard. And when people look at a deck like this, they're going to say, oh, this is like Phoenix Tribal, right? And it's not. They're going to say, oh, I'm going to have to bend my entire build strategy around getting Phoenixes back from my graveyard. Spoiler alert. And yes, but if you want to have card advantage in red... That's a great way to do it. And That's you're gonna how you win, do it. Like, if, if your goal is to win more Magic games and play Boros, this is a good way to do it. Yeah. If you want to play the colors that you like and win games, we're, that, here, to, we're here to hook you up, son. That's it. All right. Let's start with the Make X ones. We have a Boros staple, I would say, in Assemble the Legion. Oh, yeah. The, we're, we fell into we our, fell back we into fell our, our old trap. Thing. We have Assemble the Legion. <laughs> there, there we go. It's an enchantment for Boros and three. At the beginning of your upkeep, you put a muster counter on the enchantment, and then you make a 1-1 one, one red and white soldier creature token with haste for each muster counter on the enchantment. I know that you like this card. I love this card. You have to wait until your upkeep after you spend five mana to get a dude. Is yeah. that fine? I, I think so. Is, I it, think it, is it the best enchantment on the table and going to get removed before you get anything? Sometimes. But I found that it'll you'll get a few rounds out of it often. How many rounds do you need before it's good? Because it's fucking bad. <laughs> Probably three. So three would get you one, and then two, and then three. So it gets you six guys. It gets you six dudes. Yeah, six guys for five mana. That's, that's fine. Per, that's pretty good. And they'll have okay. haste. So they're oh yeah okay yeah they they block they attack they do all the stuff you want them to do and with a suggestion I'm going to suggest near the end of the show this can be a really good card if it sticks around for a while. Okay. All right, next up, we have a land in Dwarven Mine. We have a land in Dwarven Mine. <laughs> Got there. And here we fall back into the trap That's again. It. I know. Oh, shit. Say the name, Ryan. Dwarven Mine. That's a land. And it enters the battlefield tapped unless you have three other mountains. It is a mountain. And when it comes into battlefield untapped, you get a 1-1 one, one red dwarf creature token. Sweet. Dude on land. Next card, Ameria Angel. Ameria Angel is a 3-3 three, three flyer for white, white, 2 has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you create a 1-1 one, one white bird creature token with flying. Sure. Oketra's Monument. Oketra's Monument is an artifact for three. Does it matter? It's legendary. I don't think it does in this deck, mm. but it, it is legendary, everybody. Yeah, these would be sick if you could have a bunch of them, hey? Well, you, it's commander, so you well, can't. Well, yeah, <laughs> but like, 
in life, like that would be cool if you could like copy artifact it and it would make your oh yeah yeah, yeah. it would make your white creatures cost even less than than one make it cost like two less or three less and whenever you cast a creature spell of any color you create a one one white warrior creature token with vigilance sure so you're, that, you're that's, making that, dudes that's, yeah that's gonna get you dudes and you're just playing magic so that card gives you long term advantage I guess they all give you long term advantage when you're just playing magic incidentally. Yes. Last X1, Squee the Immortal. Squee the Immortal is a 2-1 for red, red 1, and you can play him from your graveyard and from exile, as well as from your hand. So S- Squeezes Christ, we call him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he died for our sins. I would say that that section, the make X1 section, is also the Borosing section, where you make a bunch of little dudes that attack and block. Yeah, the boring section. Right? <laughs> the boring os section yeah and you know what's you know what's funny is we always rag on boros for being the attacky color but like the boros section as you called it was the one that gives us long-term advantage yeah go figure yeah I'm, yeah that's cool who knew next up a quick and dirty removal suite first card dark steel mutation dark steel mutation is an enchantment for white one enchanted creature is an indestructible insect that is a zero one but loses all other abilities and creature types. I gotta put that in my uh, bald chick deck. What's her name? Estrid. Estrid. Yeah. This card can be both a blessing and a curse because I have definitely won games because somebody dark steel mutation to my blocker, and they just couldn't punch through an indestructible guy. That's so funny. <laughs> like <laughs> that has definitely a hundred percent happened. So if you're gonna play that, make sure that you have a way of getting around something that you can't kill with combat yeah, f- damage, flying or trample, etc. Right. <laughs> yes. Next up, we got Path and Swords. Those are one-drop removal. They're the best in white. Play them. Yeah, they're Path and Swords. Uh, We've got an Eerie Interlude and a Mother of Ruins in a protection category. Now, Mother of Ruins is a one-drop. You can tap it to give a creature you control protection from a color of your choice until end of turn. So it keeps your creatures alive or makes removal spells fizzle. And Eerie Interlude is an instant where you can exile any number of target creatures you control and then return them to battlefield under their owner's control at the end step. Uh, yeah, is it, that how it, that works? It, it blinks, so you can, if your thing's going to die, you blink it until end of turn. Yeah. You you interlude it. Eerily? Yes. Like a ghost. Just Ooh. vanishes until you stop looking at it again. Oh, like a boo in Mario. Yes. Hell yeah. Those yeah. things are dope as hell. They hide so much. Okay, next up, we've got a category that is labeled selection and I think kind of it is selection, kind of it's card draw. So this is more card advantage pieces in Boros. First up, Doretti, Scrap, Savant. One of my favorite Planeswalkers. He is a three loyalty, four mana walker. He costs three and a red. For plus two, you can discard up to two cards and draw that many cards. I believe it's called rummaging. That's correct. And then minus two, you can sacrifice an artifact you control to return an artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield. I believe that's Goblin Welding. And then for minus ten, you get an emblem with an ever an artifact is put into your graveyard from the B. Return it to the B at the beginning of the next end step. Yeah. So this this category is selection. I think the point here with this category and the next one is you get redundancy attached to the advantage that these cards give, like Squee, like the 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 enchantment that you like. Dark Steel Mutation? Assemble the Legion. Assemble the Legion. Yeah, yeah. The point is everything in these categories thus far have been ways to accrue long-term advantage. Advantage over time, Yeah. So next up, Hazard's Monument. We got another monument. Much like Oketra's Monument, except this one makes you red. Dudes cost less, and whenever you cast a creature spell, you may rummage, discard a card, and if you do, draw a card. That is so great when we look at the creature suite for this deck. Yes. It's going to both put more cards into your hand and more cards into your other hand, which plays into the entire strategy of this graveyard Boros deck. Ooh. Next up, land tax. You already mentioned it. I already mentioned land tax. Uh, it's an enchantment for one. During your upkeep, if an opponent has more lands than you, you can search your library for up to three planes, put them into your hand. That's Basic right. Basic planes. But- yeah, and they, they probably will because you're playing a card called Tectonic Reformation. Tectonic Reformation gives all of the lands in your hand cycling for red. <laughs> <laughs> I play that in my Boros deck. Al- alongside Skull Clamp. Which is an equipment for one. It equips for one. Kills a little dorky dude that you made with the Boros section. 
and you draw two cards. Uh, yeah, and then you get your dude back. You, you get your squee back, or you make more with your Assemble the Legion, what have you, right? Yeah. Now, here's a new one. I have never played this, but I think you have Tome of Legends. Tome of Legends is mighty in Norin. Is it good? Oh, it is mighty in Norin, dude. It is effing good. I'm not sure how good it's going to be here, but it must be in here for a reason. It is an artifact for two. Uh, enters the battlefield with a page counter on it, and then whenever your commandee enters the battlefield or attacks, you put a page counter on it, and then you can tap one and it to remove a page counter and draw a card. Boros draw a card. Yes. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's a good card. I mean, it's just, is Gerard going to come in and attack lots, do you think? Ah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's a, it's very incumbent on playing your commanders, so it's kind of, maybe it's better than it looks on paper. Or on the screen, I guess. We do have ways to get our commander back from the graveyard if we just leave him there, right? Is is his exile from graveyard ability a may? No. But you gotta play him from that command zone every time. Well, he dies and then you then his ability triggers. So you exile him and that's when you that's when you zone him. But you can respond to that. You can put that ability on the stack, and before you exile him, you can get him back. That is the Gerard combo with mm -hmm. something like a loyal retainers. Sure, yeah, I guess. Uh, shout out to Lawyer Retainers. Put it in your Gerard deck. I know it's like 70 bucks, <laughs> but it's like infinite combo with Gerard. Yeah, and that's what we need is more infinite combos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let's look, at, let's look at the next couple next couple cards here. How about a Faith's Reward? Is this a Gerard combo card? It might be. Faith's Reward, return to the battlefield all permanent cards in your graveyard that were put there from the B this turn. It costs white and three. And what's the speed of that card? It is an instant. So when Gerard dies... You, you can get Gerard bef back. Before you exile him, you Faith's Reward him back to the battlefield along with everything else. And then his ability resolves doing nothing. Unless you resolve your Faith's Reward, then sacrifice all of your stuff, and then Gerard's ability resolves, you can get it back again. Yeah, you could sack it to some stuff. We might have some sack outlets in yeah, here. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, maybe. Who knows? Read Gift of Immortality. Maybe that's a Gerard combo card. Gift of Immortality is an enchantment aura for white two. You enchant a creature with it because it's an aura. When enchanted creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Return Gift of Immortality to the battlefield attached to that creature at the beginning of the next end step. So you just stack your Gerard dies triggers and your Gift of Immortality triggers appropriately as to gift return Gerard. And then you exile everything, get everything back from your graveyard with Gerard's ability. So Sick. Gift of Immortality on Gerard gets you... Everything from your graveyard every time Gerard dies. What kind of fucking Golgari deck is this? The white, red kind. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a minute. It took me a minute to understand what you're doing. <laughs> read, read, squeeze, embrace. I just realized what the what was happening in that art. Just now I was like, why is there just some lady on this card but squeeze like holding her legs? That's fun. It is an enchant creature for red, white. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and when en enchanted creature is put into the graveyard, return that creature to its owner's hand. Huh. Another way to get your Gerard back. <laughs> like once. How about, and this is my favorite card in the set, and the deck, and the arc, Underworld Breach. We played this last week. We did. I feel like we're going to be playing this one a lot in am the I, future. Am I biased? We're am I picking decks that it just has <laughs> Underworld oh, Breach? Probably. We're going to reach the point where we're just going to say, yeah, it's got Breach in it. Who cares? But it's an enchantment for red one. Each non-land card in your graveyard has escape, and its escape cost is equal to its mana cost, plus remove three cards from your graveyard from the game. So you can basically... It's Yawgmoth's Will in red, is what it is. Yeah, so it's an enchantment, so you have to have it out there, and you have to... Who cares? You know what this card actually says? It says, draw cards equal to the number of cards in your graveyard, minus three for each card that you actually want to cast. So if you've got like, if you've got, and I've had this in my Brian Stoutarm Boros deck, if I've got like 25 cards in my graveyard and I want to cast however many I want to cast, you just do it. Just cast them. Yeah. And if they're instants or sorcerers, you can just cast them over and over and over again. Yeah. Like your face reward. Yeah. Yo, you have to sacrifice your underworld breach at the end of turn. You can face reward it back. You could, you could sacrifice your Gerard and your Faith's Reward. You can sacrifice your Gerard and your Underworld Breach and you just time it correctly so your Gerard will get you your Underworld Breach back. <laughs> right? Like You can do all kinds of stuff. 
Oh. Moving on, we got a couple tutors: enlightened goblin engineer and open the armory. Uh, enlightened tutor finds an enchantment or an artifact, puts it on top. Goblin engineer finds a artifact, puts it into your graveyard, and you can sack an artifact to get an artifact with converted mana cost three or less back from your graveyard to play. Open the armory finds an aura or and equipment to your hand. Sure. So They're all gonna, tutors and they all go in different places. We're going to find our gift of immortality. We're going to find our monuments or tombs or skull clamps. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Ashnod's altar and spawning pit are our sack outlets. We're, we can find those. Yes. Uh, <laughs> one of them sacks creatures for two mana. One of them sacks creatures to put a counter on spawning pit. And then you can remove a couple of counters and pay some mana to get a 2-2 with the spawning pit. You know what I feel like with Gerard and that Faith's Reward type combo is we can have all our creatures sacrifice them all, make a bunch of mana, Gerard them all back, sacrifice them again. I feel like this deck wants like a, like a, like a comet storm or something, you know? Or like a goblin bombardment. Uh, yeah, I feel like I can kill people better with Ashnod's altar and a ton of mana than I can with a goblin bombardment. You could just make the goblin bombardment instead of the spawning pit. What does spawning pit do? I don't think you read it. I, I sure did. You sack a creature to put a counter on it, then you take a counter off, or two counters off, pay a mana, you get a spawn. Oh, yeah. I must have missed that part. <laughs> I was thinking about Underworld Breach again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, sack outlets, great. What about, before we get to what we're actually sacrificing, board wipes? There are seven of them. Yeah, I'll, sh should we clump? Because they all just kill stuff. Yeah. Do some clumping. You're better at it than me. Okay, we've got a stair Command, Blasphemous Act, Chain Reaction, Settle the Records, Tragic Arrogance, Vandal Blast, and Winds of Abandon. They all kill one thing or everything. Some of them get your opponent some land. Some of them only kill artifacts. Some of them kill two things of your choice. But the moral of the story is they just wreck all of something. Yeah, if you want to spend one card and get like ten cards worth of advantage, this is your category. Yes. I think that's good. I think it's good as well. Oh, quick little bit, I guess, of more recursion. <laughs> what kind of what kind of Kalkari deck is this? I love it. We've got another land in Buried Ruin. Uh, Buried Ruin taps for colorless, or you can tap two and it and sack it to return an artifact from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, sure, I think that's just incidentally in there because it's it, a two-color deck and you can afford it. And it gets your sack outlet back. It can... Oh, yeah, get your Ashnod's Altar back. Yeah, you can get some stuff back with it. That's, that's a good card to kill, I've heard. Tell me what you think about this card. A Mary of the Sky Ruined think, in this deck. I think it's terrible, and nobody should play this. Have you ever once got a card back with a Mary of the Sky Ruined? In a not mono white deck? Yeah. No. Yeah, and you, you probably won't. Should we just move on? Yeah. Goblin Welder. Oh, baby. Give him the truth. <laughs> Goblin Welder is you tap, take an artifact, a player controls... And an artifact in that player's graveyard and switch them. So you just, that's called welding. Yes. You weld. That's, that's it. Don't even read the whole block of text on the card. You weld. Yeah, you switch two artifacts in a graveyard. Yeah. And it doesn't have, like, so if they have a Necromas Memorial and, like, a Icker Wellspring, switch them. Yeah. F off, right? Like, you can do it to an opponent. <laughs> yeah. As long as the artifact in the graveyard and the controller are, like, the same person. Oh. You Goblin can do it to ourself or to them. That's the important part. Goblin Welder is, in fact, the truth. Hall of Heliod's Generosity. This is another, feels like, to get your combo back. It's another land. It taps white one and itself to put target enchantment card in your graveyard on top of your library. So you get your Faith's Reward back or whatever it is you need to get back. Not Faith's Reward. You know the card I'm talking about. Gift of Immortality. That's the one. That's right. Or there Squeeze Embrace if you just want to spend lots of mana, I guess. Yeah. Fine. People love spending lots of mana. How about these two little ditties, Karmic Guide and Revelark, or Reviark, as some people say? It's too many L's for it to be Reviark. Uh, uh, well, in, in Spanish, it, two L's make a Y sound, right? Well, this isn't Spain. Or Mexico. Yeah. Or anywhere else they speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Both are dudes. Both are white. They get you stuff back from your graveyard to play. I think it's important that Karmic Guide has Echo, so it dies if you don't pay the Echo cost and then Gerard can get it back, then get something else back with your with your Karmic Guide? Yeah, that's a thing. There's probably something, some combo built in there that I just, I've never ran a Rev, Revlark Karmic Guide combo before, so I'm just like, oh yeah, probably combos. It's like, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it does, though. 
Last one, Sun Titan. Sun Titan is Sun Titan. Cost six is a six six. It has Vig. It returns a three cost permanent or less from your graveyard to the B whenever it attacks or comes into play. Get your Skull Clamp back. Get your Ashnod back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Get a Fetch Land back if you're hurting. It. Does, oh yeah. It does all the things. We got fetches in this deck. Probably. No, we got a terrain generator though. Oh, that's fine. It's basically the same thing, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Who plays a plateau and not an arid mesa? <laughs> Welcome to CCO Nation. <laughs> well, that, that, that modern format, you know, it's going to start making fetch lands more expensive than duels right away. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> let's, let's take a look at some Creech. So we're talking about getting accumulated advantage. We're talking about board wiping. We're talking about getting everything back. What if we don't do any of those things? How are we then going to get our advantage? I think we're going to get it back with a sweet, sweet... A sweet suite of phoenixes? 16 of them. Holy God. I like that it says the one thing I like about Architect. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him a little, give him the rub here. Next to each thing, it, like each category, it says how much all the categories. Uh, yeah. In the, like all the cards 16, in the category are worth. 16 phoenixes and they're $23 <laughs> total. Yeah. So like if you want to buy every phoenix, essentially, 23 bucks. Yep. 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 Just, just. The the seven board wipes we read cost thirty five, right? <laughs> <laughs> Shit! All right, let's 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 bust through some of okay, these. Okay, uh, there are some subtleties to phoenixes, but generally they're four or five cost phoenixes creature type that cost red and whatever. Yeah, you get them back from your graveyard to your hand. Of course, they fly. They're three threes. Just just to put a bow on it, there's 16 of them. 10 of them come back from the graveyard directly to the battlefield as part of the ability on the card. And that doesn't take into account the 12 other ways that we have to get cards back from our graveyard and Gerard. Yeah. So just have all that in mind and read a few phoenixes off for us. All right, we got a Coom Firebird. It's a 3-3 for 4. Flying Haste attacks each turn of Fable. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you can pay 6. If you do, it comes back into play. Arclight Phoenix is a 3-2 for 4. Flying Haste at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you have cast 3 or more instant or sorcery cards, it comes back. Ash Cloud Phoenix is a 4-1 flyer for 4. You actually said the word Ash. Oh my god, what has become what has become of <laughs> it's me? It's a new arc. Oh no, it's not that new. Ass Cloud Phoenix. <laughs> Boah, thought you were gonna get me. I don't think so, sucker. When it dies, you return it to the battlefield face down, and then it has morph for six. Uh, morph <laughs> Morph Cloud Phoenix. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. All right, we got Oh, these are fucking so bad. <laughs> they're so bad, but they're so good. <laughs> All right, we had, do you want to talk about cards that are really good? Oh, Let's talk. certain visions. I wonder if he has a dark visions misprinted one. <laughs> <laughs> we got Bogarden Phoenix for red, 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 two for a 3-3 three, three flyer. If it would be put into any graveyard from play and has no death counter on it, you return it to play a with counter. a death counter on it. <laughs> And then if it dies with the death counter on it, you remove it from the game. It looks like it was done in pencil ground. It, <laughs> it looks like a Brando token altar. Oh, man. That's, that's so what it looks like. Oh, we forgot new patron sign-up gifts Brando altars again. Yeah, People we can, loved them. Yeah, I had a really good time making them. So if you want a Brando altar, you get at us. You get at us on Patreon. Pledge. You get a funny nickname. You get a funny Brando altar. So you, you get the point. You do a thing. Your shit comes back. It keeps going. I'm just going to bang through the rest so you know what we're playing. We got a Flame Wreathed Phoenix, a Flame Wake Phoenix, an Immortal Phoenix, called Dotha Phoenix, Magma Phoenix, Phoenix of Ass, Rekindling Phoenix, Shart Phoenix, Scargan Firebird, Skyfire Phoenix, and Warcry Phoenix. Some of those had the right names pronounced. Some of them didn't. Yes. <laughs> so the point is we got Phoenix I? Phoenixes? What is the plural? I'm not sure. I was thinking of that too. Whatever, we got them. There's 16 of them. Ev pretty much every single creature in the deck either comes back or gets us stuff back. And it's we're pretty... playing Boros. Yeah. Right? Including the commander. <laughs> so, Wincon. Yes. We've got exactly one. It's the last creature. There's only one Wincon because it's a Boros deck. 
Besides, like, crashing in with, like, ten flying phoenixes that all have haste. <laughs> yeah. Flare of the hate bound. Ooh, Flare of the hate bound is a 4-2 for four, 6, one of which is red. It has undying. Everybody knows undying, right? Uh, when it dies, it comes back with a plus one counter on it. There we go. Whenever a Flare of the hate bound or another creature comes into play from the graveyard, it deals damage equal to its power to something. So any Gerard combo while Flare is out is going to win you the game. Gerard with 10 phoenixes in your graveyard is going to get you closer to winning the game. Get you 10, and then you're going to attack for a bunch. Yep. It's a pretty good card. You could have Flare out and then cast Underworld Breach and make a bunch of mana and cast a bunch of stuff from your graveyard. Yeah. Good card. It's a very good card. And it beats for two. For four, I mean. I guess that's not that much. It's a 25-cent staple in a legacy deck, isn't it? Uh, not anymore. Is, is Manalist Dredge not a thing anymore? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't play Legacy anymore. I play, I play fucking EDH. Yeah, yeah. 90% of the people that listen just shut our cast off. <laughs> <laughs> Final section. Hit us with some ramp. We've got 11 pieces. I think we're probably safe to clump. And please tell me about Core Cartographer, because I don't think anybody actually knows that that card even exists. Okay, we're going to clump them all, then we'll go back and talk about a couple of them. Yeah. All right, we got Arcane Signet, Boreas Charger, Boros Signet, Commander Sphere, Knight of the White Orchid, Core Cartographer, Mindstone Smothering Tithe, Sol Ring, Sword of the Animus, Talisman of Conviction. So, Boreas Charger? Question mark? That's a cool one. It is a Pegasus, 2 1 for white 2 with flying. When it leaves the battlefield, you pick an opponent who controls more lands than you. You Then you search your library for a number of planes equal to the difference and put one of them into play and the rest into your hand. One of them into play. So that's pretty cool. That is a cool card. As long as you weren't the player that went first, or if you were, as long as somebody cast a ramp spell. Yep, you're catching up a little bit. Yeah. And it does I that white it, ramp thing where it at least gives you the option of hitting your land drop every turn. Gives you that consistency. Yeah, like let's say somebody has like three more land than you or two more land than you. You get one into play, and then you get another one to to play next turn. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's that's, good. That's kind of like when it draw when it dies. Search for a land, draw another card, and that card that you draw is just always a land. Mm -hmm. People forget that when you when you search up land with like land tax, it's kind of a draw three if you assume that everything you ever draw is going to be land which is like the least powerful thing in your deck, but it's also the thing that lets you play magic. It lets you do all the most powerful things in your deck. So, yeah. How about how about Core Cartographer? Core Cartographer, get this, it's a 2-2 two, two for white 3. Okay, so it costs 4. Yeah. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a planes card, put it into play tapped, and then shuffle your shit. God, I wish that was a 1-1 one, one for white 2. Yeah, hey. Oh, they know what they're doing. I get it. It existed in Zendikar. It couldn't just be a three drop that let you cast your Ameria Angel a turn sooner. Like, I get it. Yeah. But uh, it's funny, Ameria Angel's in this deck, too. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it turns out stuff yeah. from Zendikar was good. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's fine. That's a cool card. We all know Smothering Tithe. We all know the rest of them. Sword of the Animist is an equipment that you put on a dude and you swing in and you can search for a basic put it into play. Oh, put it on your core cartographer. Get all the planes. Sure, or a mountain right. if you want to do that too. Uh, well, it only gets planes, right? No, sort of the animist is the one that it's not the the myriad oh, one. It's yeah, the sorry. whenever it attacks, you get a basic into play. Oh yes, my bad. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of the myriad one. Put that on your course card. Blade card. of selves. Yeah, oh, is that, that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah that that's card what, is just dope. That, that could find a spot in here. That would be a good suggestion. Yeah, you could probably find fine. a home for that in here. I don't know. Raph's pretty smart guy. He probably thought of that yeah. already. When you're attacking with lots of dudes that aren't giant, having more dudes that aren't giant is pretty good yeah speaking of dudes i'm just gonna make my suggestion now because sure. i think that this deck especially since it's attacking with a ton of phoenixes or like soldier tokens coat of arms fuck coat of arms yeah i know you hate fucking that card. hate that card <laughs> play shared animosity no shared animosity might cost you like 65 more dollars but it only works for you and it's awesome it gives your dudes plus one plus oh for each attacking creature that shares a type with, with an attacking with it. creature. So okay. it turns your 16 phoenixes in from like a bunch of 2-2s two and 4-1s into like a bunch of 22-25s. I'm going to run them both in Persistent Partitioners. You can't you, fault me for doing both. No, I can't fault you for both. As long as you're not only running Coat of Arms. <laughs> the trolley Coat of Arms. White-bordered 7th <laughs> edition one. 
do it. And I'll troll you right back by killing you with my tribal deck. <laughs> you just made my deck better. Thanks, you dick. What, what you um you were uh, shared animosity is your suggestion? Absolutely. Okay. I think shared animosity has a home in this deck without question. Okay. Well, since we're talking about suggestions and you mentioned shared animosity being more than coat of arms, $367 deck. It's a solid budget for such a cool deck. Y- yes, that is a cheap deck and now get this it is running a plateau architect has it at 125 bucks tcg yep. mid probably right yep. dump that drop kick it right now land tax 25 bucks you could probably take that you out could probably take it out at the cost of 25 bucks as a case of beer that's true 150 dollars in two cards cut them 217 dollar deck it's pretty good. That is a good price for a deck, considering phoenixes for sixteen of them cost. What do we say? Twenty three bucks. Like twenty four bucks. Yeah, it's it's good. Right. You've got some cards that have you know a seven, eight, whatever dollar price tag. Like you've got the and you've got the enlightened tutor. You have got the smothering tithe. Like those are some of White's best cards. Yep. You probably don't want to cut those at the cost of spending you know fifteen bucks on those two cards, but. I mean, this is an affordable deck, and apparently it rakes. Like, it just has all the advantage in the world. It's impossible to play against because you can't kill anything because everything comes back. The, the 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 counter to that, devil's advocate to that, is graveyard hate is abundant, and a piece of graveyard hate will probably wreck this deck. Oh, yeah. I don't think it actually runs any artifact or enchantment removal. Uh, yeah, I suppose so like you a, could you cut your land tax. Right. Oh, it plays the uh, it plays the Vandal Blast. Right, so like a turn one Leyland of the Void just ruins you. I was gonna say cut the uh, cut the land tax and play like a name your disenchant effect. Yeah, right, and that'll save you whatever twenty five bucks. Right, yeah, playing like an Aura of Silence or something so you can make the the hate come down later, and then when the good one comes in, you can kill it. Yeah, very much so. Sure, like it's a it's an idea. Yeah, so strengths and weaknesses. I think we we hit on some of the strengths just then. I really look to uh, backwards in the message boards in the CCO Discord when the deck was submitted because people are like, oh, yeah, I've played against that or I had a deck just like that or I know somebody who built it and it like impossible to kill recursion card advantage by way of getting stuff back from your graveyard in a Boros deck. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Again, the the weakness, of course, being, as we said, a good piece of graveyard hate that sticks will... That's right. It'll get you. And if that does happen, you don't have any traditional means of card advantage through drawing cards other than Skull Clamp, which you... I mean, there is five or six things that are clampable that you can get back. Uh, and, and while they do recur or have continuous advantage, Skull Clamp's a pretty big lightning rod. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The the deck's biggest advantage in that it's something unexpected and it, it's doing something typically not found in Boros is also kind of the weakness because if you stop it from doing that thing, it doesn't really have it runs into the Boros problem where okay now it Yeah, now I don't have any cards left. Yeah, I don't even have the I'm gonna play a bunch of guys and turn them sideways because all your guys are gone now. Yeah, now th- I do have an, another strength. There is like the Gerard combo finish. Right, and that is makes it feel a little bit more glass cannony when you talk about the combo finish and graveyards and blah blah blah. But I don't think I would call the deck a glass cannon because you do have that graveyard recursion built into your creature suite, and you could go the aggro route. Absolutely, like you if you have four or five flying four power creatures, and you know it's late enough in the game, you know people are around 15, 18 life. Smack somebody with a team of phoenixes, they're gonna die. Yeah, I I won a game last night off the back of attacking with an evolution sage and a treasure nabber. <laughs> I just did, I attacked with two three twos for four turns, and I won a game. That's excellent. <laughs> like sometimes hitting people for six, just if you do it enough times, they're they're That's gonna it. die. That's it. And when you have the recursion built into your creature suite and the the board wipe suite that this deck has, sometimes you're just gonna get there with Creech. Yeah, Creech beats. Yeah, dude. That's Turning it. cards sideways is one of my favorite things. That's it. So let's take a look at some of the uh, the spice calculator metrics. Okay. 132 Gerard lists on EDH Rec. It's a respectable number, I think. 
Yeah, that's fine. He's 15th on the list of all-time Boros commanders. Puts him right above Aurelia, Exemplar of Justice, and right below Tajik Legion's Edge. Oh, sure. Yeah, whatever. Like, they both have Mentor. He's, like, stuck in between these two Mentor guys. <laughs> that's Dang. fine. 3.31 average CMC. Which is fine. That's about where you usually live in the casual commander these days. Yeah, it's inching closer to three as the years go on. I think it's respectable, fine. It's fine. The Phoenix is very rarely cost that much because you might have just, I don't know. Is, can we mill ourselves in this deck? Uh, Hazard's Monument lets us rummage. Yeah, there's and lots so does of, Duretti. There's lots of rummaging. I feel like another thing that you could play around with in a deck like this is something like an Altar of the Brood. Oh, mill to, yourself? To mill yourself. You, does it mill you? I th mills yourself no, it or is mills, it just opponents? mills your opponents. Ah, that oh. sucks. Dang it. Altar of Dementia. How about that? Would that work yeah. on you? Yeah. Sack a creature and then you mill yourself? Yeah, you could like you sack- You get your phoenixes back. Yeah, you could phoenix yourself until you mill your whole deck and then reanimate everything over and over again to make sure you have all your pieces. Oh, just do Gerard combo with, um, with Altar of Dementia? Yeah. And you can Gerard combo and just keep milling the phoenixes that you're getting back with Gerard? And eventually you get your Flare of the Hate bound into your graveyard, then you get it back with Gerard, then you just... Then you just win. That's pretty good. That's yeah, not too bad. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. We just we just did it. We Break, got there. Breaking Boros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, is that the same as Breaking Bad? Is it the same as making <laughs> Boros great again? Yes. All things we've done in the past on yes. CCO Nation. <laughs> and that's it. So three tutors in the deck does hurt the spice rating, but when we are playing a little bit of a, a niche strategy like... Get your Phoenix back. Dot tribal. <laughs> yeah, you, you get some you get some bonus points for doing that, but that's a lot of tutors. Oh yeah. Okay, so we punch it all into the spice calculator with the three tutors. He's got thirty four unique cards that are different than the stock page on EDH Rec for Gerard. Are sixteen of them Phoenixes? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, gives him a spice rating with the tutors of thirty eight, but we change the tutor amount if he did want to cut. Two of them. Yep. We give him a free one to find that uh, to find that underworld breach or that that gift of immortality. Every, give him a free one. Everybody gets one. It's my uh, motto in life. Yeah, bunches up the spicy rating to fifty two. There we go. Pass the fifty test. We got there. It's a fun deck that passes the fifty test. I dig that. Yeah, and you know what? If you cut that enlightened tutor, you'd be saving yourself some coin. Yeah, how much is that thing going for now? They're... Wow, thirty. Three American dollars, like sixty-eight ninety-one Canadian. That is not cheap. Wow, that's another one of those cards I look at. It, I'm like, what the? F yeah. How did that happen? Yeah, I remember paying like eight bucks for mine. And like, I ordered a suite of them for a a, a hive mind deck that I built. <laughs> I ordered four of them so that I could find my hive mind, and I I bought them just because like I just wanted them, and they were of a price point at that point where it's like I don't even I didn't even think twice about buying them. <laughs> and I'm, I'm never being flush with extra money when I was in university. They must have cost me like two bucks each. Yeah, that's it. Whew. Some of them are pretty wretched looking, though. I'll that's be honest. Fine. Some that's fine. Like, you, you probably know somebody that can fix them anyways. Yeah, they're, they're sleeve playable, right? Oh, yeah. That's all that matters. <laughs> so that's the deck. I love it. I love doing graveyards. I love doing butt stuff. Yeah, I you do. I love doing Boros butt stuff. <laughs> There's a cam girl reference on the pre-show. <laughs> yeah, there is. I don't know how we keep making those, but we do. I don't know how Wizards doesn't shut us down. <laughs> Stop talking about our damn product, you Canadian bastards. Yeah. Give us the final thought of the day. I got to go drink some water. Thank the patrons, our glorious overlords, Raf Garcia. Give us, give us the Brando final thought of the day will do uh, i want to thank everybody for being here thanks raf for helping us name the arc and sending in this deck thank you to face to face games.com they're canada's biggest magic store uh, remember we got our mystery boosters giveaway so make sure you check out our pre-show on youtube or any of our social media that cco brando cco podcast on twitter uh cco podcast on facebook youtube all those places there's lots of places you can uh, get involved with the nation in that way uh, as far as the deck goes, I think it's a great deal of fun. As we have talked about lots, it's doing something that isn't traditionally thought of as Boros. And it really does make you realize that this color combination that takes so much shit can do more than what it is purported to be able to do if you just come at it from a different angle and realize that you can find advantage in other ways besides just ramping mana and playing cards. And drawing cards, because... 
that's what they do. I do it all the time, and it's it's not so bad. So try it yourself. Build this deck. I highly recommend it. You probably have most of the stuff in your LGS or in your binder because a bunch of it's crap or staples. So you guys all put it together. Play it. Let Raf Garcia know. His Twitter handle will be down in the show notes below. And we're going to be back with another super sweet deck on another episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song! Ooh.